do that? Well, first off, this is Sue, the Soggy Stamper. Rain or shine, it's stamping time. And I'm an independent Stampin' Up! demonstrator in Northwest Washington. Um, and I am happy to have you join us. If you leave a comment, um, I'm not able to monitor my iPad uh, for comments while I'm demonstrating. But rest assured that I will um, respond to your comments um, when I'm through recording. So I have been for several, well, probably five di weeks, uh, five day weeks, yeah, um, featuring this darling, scary cute stamp set and but uh, actually bundle. And uh, I have made this card. And we've done this one. And this one is another one like the one I just showed you. Slightly different. Pops up like that. And last week I showed you a pop-up card. And I discovered, thanks to somebody who was watching the video on YouTube, that I didn't have it in the camera very well. So I'm going to actually show you how to make it this and this time I'm going to make sure that you can see it. Yeah, okay. So, this is a pop-up card. They are not too difficult to make, except for getting the pop-up part to work right. And what I love about this one is, when you open the card, it goes this way, up pops the black cat. And it closes down, and then it pops up. So let's get started. I'm using the Scary Cute stamp set and the device. that go with it. I've got the die for the houses, the haunted houses. We've got some bat dies. We've got the cat die. We have a moon die. We have a die to cut out the greetings. And we have a die, two dies, that will either cut out just branches like in this card where you get just the branches or you can use them together like this to cut out a frame so you put them together like that and it will cut out a frame and then on another card I wanted to use the frame but I didn't want to have it the same color as the branches so I actually cut it out of mango melody and then cut the branches off and applied it as a frame just as a frame so there's a variety of things that you can do with this stamp set and I could just see that black cat popping up so we start with this is a uh, eight and a half by f um, four and a quarter, and I have scored it at five and a half, and then at one and a half, five five and a half here, and then this one is one and a half from this end here. And we'll make those good and tight folds. So this is the base of the card, and it will be going like this. And then I have two pieces of Evening Evergreen. This one is one and three, one and fourth, um, eight and a half by, wait, 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 eight and a half by two inches. And again, I scored it at five and a half. And then I turned it around and scored it at one and a half. So we have that kind of a flap. And it goes like this. So this is the basis of your card. And we're going to put the, um, the pop-up piece in there. 
Now I wanted, when I started to construct it, I had this part is the grass, and then I put the trees in, I mean the houses in, and I went, wait a minute, they can't sit in the um, starry sky up in the air on grounded. So I put another piece in of the evening evergreen, and this one is two inches by not quite four inches. And it goes right in here like this. I'll get my snail. I'm sorry, not my snail. My stamp is sealed. Man, after 21 years, I'm still having troubles. So much of a habit to call it snail. So I'm going to slide it down in here. Like so. Making sure that it doesn't block that fold. And then the rest of it, I didn't need it to be clear over to here because this piece will fit there like that. Okay, so let's work first on the front part. Unfortunately, this die set doesn't cut out the little tiny kits. So I had to fussy cut them. I stamped them and I had to fussy cut them. And I wanted them walking by a fence. Well, this is a piece from the split textures card front. Let me get it. And I was using, I'm using this as the top. Oh, actually, this is the top. Anyway, I lined it up so that the two inches I lined it up like this. And ran it through the embossing, uh, the cut and emboss machine. But because it has such small pieces to it, I did put this time, I remembered to take time to put the, stamp, uh, the adhesive sheet on the back. So that I wouldn't have to put little tiny dots all over this piece of the part of the net, of the fence. So I'm going to finish putting out, po poking out these things with my pokey tool. Stampin', stampin' pick, or pick your, take your pick, that's what it's called. We often refer to it, though, as the pokey tool. Take your pick, and it's a very useful tool. One end is a point. If you unscrew it and turn it around, you have a spatula to help you take off, pick up uh, things like um, sequins, adhesive back things. You can also replace this end with a, uh, a ball for embossing, for dry embossing. Or you can replace it with, we have a, um, a dye brush that you brush to take out those little pieces. The other end has clay that you can use to pick up pieces like that. Very, very handy. And this also, I believe, I thought you could replace that too. No, I don't. I think this is permanent. So anyway, that's the pokey tool. It's also going to be very handy for taking off the um, for taking off the adhesive but I want just I don't want this part of the fence to show so I'm going to cut it right along here Now we'll 
take it apart, take off the top. Take off the paper liner. Come on. There we go. The take your pick tool is very useful for this. Toss that out of the way. And I'm going to line it up right here at the edge of that fold. Like that. And now I can put the kiddos on it. This little guy, I want to have lead off. And I cut him out earlier and lost him. So I stamped him again and then in the process of cutting him out, I cut off his lantern. It's kind of tricky doing little tiny things like this. And a little tiny piece of, little tiny dr drops of glue is much ben beneficial. Put him right there. He's leading the way because he has the lantern. Let's see how little bit of glue I can get on this one. And that's the way it's supposed to be to go. Uh, my lantern stand up right. There. Okay. Oh, well, there he is. He just appeared. And then Princess, she has to go. The fairy princess has to go next. new bottle so it's very generous with its glue. I'm not very fond of this multi-purpose liquid glue because it gets all over me my fingers but the advantage of it is you can move it around briefly when you set it down. There she is. I'm going to put the zombie guy on that, that next for spacing. Finally, this guy. And I'm completely out of the picture. Sorry about that. That's why it's good to have a monitor so you can see what you're doing. So you can see what the you guys can see. Now, if I really wanted to get fancy, I could have 
colored with not um, with the evening evergreen in the white spots but this way I'm, sh I'm not sure that the details would show up quite as much okay so that takes care of that part and like I say it's going to fasten on here like so and it will be onto this side but first we have to do the pop-up part so this piece is um, two inches by two inches by not quite four inches no that's not right it's one and a quarter by one and a half and I marked three quarters of an inch this way and three quarters of an inch this way and I'm making a flap and folding it back. We're going to be constructing, if you can see down in here, we're going to be putting this piece in. And the trick is to get it in so that when it's folded down, you don't see out the bottom you don't see the cat and yet when it's up okay so it goes it goes down like this I'm put it about like that and then you fold this down over it and I pray that it's right. But when I fold it up, he's not up. So this is the trick. Because I want him to be up. And when he's folded down, oh, come on. This is the tricky part. Not there. Okay. That's the way to go. This is why we use liquid glue. Okay, and then he folds down. Yeah, he's still gonna show. One more time. No, <laughs> that's not right. Because this way. And then he comes down like that. Let's see. I think that's right. So it folds down. And I put them together like this. And he'll pop up. Yes! That's the way he goes. Oh, but I slide it down some. So he's still tied underneath. Barely. I have a lot of glue there. So I'm going to be careful not to. I'm going to let it dry a bit, actually. Bossing buddy. Here it is. When you get excess glue, there's two ways you can take care of it. You can either powder it so it doesn't stick, or you can actually apply 
alcohol and rub it off. And since this is not going to be seen, I'm just going to use powder on it. Now it should go down and up. And up. Okay. Yay! That wasn't as hard as that sometimes is. Okay, so now I'm going to put liquid glue on this side. Match it up. And then I'm going to fold it down like that. And I will put adhesive on this side. So when the card's closed, you don't see the cat. And when you open it, it pops up perfecto. Whew, you guys, it worked out. I was a little nervous about doing this, uh, to be honest. Now the cat has to be silhouetted by a harvest moon. This is a one inch uh, circle that I punched out of the um, Mango Melody. I think it's my favorite color. And I'm going to glue that. Onto this piece here. Behind the cat. Like that. So the cat goes down. He comes up. Boo. I love playing with this. So much fun. Okay, now let's finish it off. We're going to have a couple of houses. Haunted houses. And some bats to add to the sky. some of that excess. I'm going to have one sitting there. Put one over here. The one thing you have to be careful about with these pop up cards is that you don't have something that will that the pop up will catch on. Okay, there's this case where that alcohol is going to work. And this is just rubbing alcohol. And you just spritz it on. And then I'm going to get it clean. Or I don't want glue on the thing. And then you just rub it off like that. And the alcohol dries. And most of the time, you can't tell that it's been fixed. I have found that this works with um, the foil papers too. Um, if I did have one that um, the color wiped off when I was wiping off the glue. But most of them, if you're careful, the thing with the foil that you have to be careful is that you don't have, um, you don't cause creases in it. You have to move, you have to do a fairly even thing. But see how that 
took that glue away really easily. Okay, now we'll put some bats in there. Please, just a little bit. Yes, 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 yes. Okay, that's good. Turn them around. Bat number one. Oops, too much glue. And some little black bats. I don't know if it's just my die cutting machine, but you can feel a little bit of a ridge um, on the back side when you die cut something. And that's what I was feeling for was to see which which was the top side. Okay, so now all we've got left to do with our card is put our greeting on that says Say boo and scary on. And I just gonna pop it on there like that. And I am not gonna use liquid glue this time. I have enough of a mess with it anyway. Make sure I okay. Okay. Stamp and seal is Nice stuff, but it gets all over my fingers, too. Maybe I'm just a messy stamper. Anyway, there you go. Say boo and scary on. And there's our cat popping up. Oh, I love it. I love it. So I had one more idea using this stamp set, which I'm not going to demonstrate. I promise. I'm going to go on because our my... Um, bundle of the month for this month is the holly leaves. Um, it's the holly leaves bundle. Leaves of holly, sorry. And the dies. This is the bundle for October. You buy this bundle from me, and I will send you five cards uh, tutorials for cards. Here's a couple of cards that I've made using it. Aren't they gorgeous? But this is the other card that I have made with the set. I have used the glimmer, the washi tape, the glimmer washi tape. Isn't that pretty? So you can do a serious one, or you can do a um, a kid type card with this bundle. Okay, well that was that's it for today. Thank you so much for watching. I'm Sue, the Soggy Stamper. If you need any of the supplies for this project, um, you can e buy them. Email me, sue at soggystamper.com, and I can order it for you. Or you can shop on my online store, Creations by Sue dot stampin up
www.soggystuff.net. My blog is so, um, www.soggystamper.com, and this video will be up on my YouTube channel, The Soggy Stamper, this afternoon. Thanks for watching. Have a wonderful weekend, and I'll see you again next Friday afternoon. Bye-bye.